Hi friends, I am Shammi Prabhakar and you are watching Charter Times. Have you ever realized in the real life as well, the losses appears on the asset side of our life's balance sheet? You know, you must wonder why it's happening even in the real life. In accountancy, we all understand the logic. So now today we have a very versatile, legendary actor, director, a script writer and a leadership coach who has already inspired millions of Indians through his wisdom. So we're going to talk to him about how should we build a purposeful leadership. And he's also going to share his views about this pandemic, how to how to realize the benefits coming out of this pandemic and how you should not take it as a loss of time or loss of opportunities. Rather, it's an asset getting accumulated in your balance sheet. So I'm switching it over to our network partner, Mr. Venkatesan S, who will be taking this conversation further with none other than Mr. Raja Krishnamurti. Charter Times and it's a non-sharing platform managed by finance and experienced professionals. It brings a lot of content about recent updates and developments, accounting standards like IFRS, US GAPS, international taxation, stock market fundamentals and stock tips, corporate skills and a lot of motivation as well. So if you have not subscribed our channel yet, please click this button. And welcome to the conversation with Raja Krishnamurti. Now, it's a very special session. Uh, we could be discussing on building a purposeful leadership and specifically, you know, concentrating on this, uh, you know, new normal and pandemic. Pandemic. So let me introduce. Uh, now, today our guest is a versatile and multidisciplined, highly talented, a professional having an industry experience of over 35 years. He's an author, activist, cartoonist, scriptwriter, director, accomplished actor, and has been supporting uh, organizations and entrepreneurs uh, as a leadership coach and as an OD expert for over 35 years. An alumni of Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management started his career with ITC. He was associated with Enfield India, Polaris, Talent Maximus and various leadership capacities. Uh, truly a multidisciplinary think talent. So let me welcome, welcome sir, Kitty sir. And we all know you as Kitty sir. So very thankful for obliging our request and being a part of this question. So now I would actually you know, request you to probably brief and introduce yourself a bit. Thank you. Uh, very good. To begin with, uh, thank you so much. Uh, truly appreciate this uh, wonderful opportunity that you've created. I hope the voice is coming through perfectly uh, okay for you in terms, yes, in terms of uh, audibility. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes. Uh, yeah, so there are so many good things that you kind of uh, talked about in terms of the introduction. I would simply say that I'm a connoisseur of life. Or in Tamil, as we say, Varka in Rasiga. Okay. Uh, so to me, um, uh, everything about life is extremely fascinating, and that is the reason why I get drawn into so many aspects of life. Uh, it could be the uh, philosophical aspect of life, it could be the creative aspect of life, it could be artistic aspect of life, it could be social concerns of life. I get drawn into that because I think uh, all of them uh, have that uh, beautiful kind of a collage you know, to come and put together and make life so much uh, fascinating. So that's the first part of it. Um, I'm uh, less logical and more romantic, let me tell you that. <laughs> okay, that's one part of it. Uh, uh, and I'm uh, uh, less practical and more experimental, let me tell you that also. <laughs> I mean, this is, that's what makes my life uh, so much more interesting. Uh, fundamentally, I would say that um, my perspective of life is... Uh, what you may call as uh, dharmic principle of life. What I call as the principle centeredness, which is very much part of the ethos, uh, you know, you know, the Eastern ethos or the Indian culture, uh, the, the, the anmik kannotam as we call it in Tamil. And therefore that is the fundamental of uh, all the work that I do. In fact, uh, you may be surprised to know that even all the models that have, uh, you know, kind of worked on and which have evolved over the years have very strong roots on basically the philosophy of life as thought of by the uh, you know, Eastern uh, world, very much. Pretty interesting, sir, because uh, 
Now, actually, this you know forces me to ask you this first question. You know, because sure. Yeah, one thing is you are into so much of you know talent, and you are you are into so many fields. Now yeah. we get to know from you that you're also into the spiritual aspect or the dharmic aspect of it. If I have to mm. put it in the right sense, right? And you mm. you try to amalgamate or encapsulate everything into a specific you know funnel and say how to lead a successful or I would not use the word successful probably a peaceful and a joyful life, you know, uh, the sandosham we call it, right? So. So the one question that I have, which is prominent, is how do you manage your life? Because it's very difficult for us to probably, you know, manage ourselves considering our personal life and and the professional life, be it a consultant or an employee or a lawyer or a doctor, whatever it is. It's just two hats. One is a personal hat as an individual. In my case, is probably as Winket, and second is probably as an, you know, wanting to become an HR professional hat. How do you handle? Because what cartoonists now that requires a lot of thinking. There is a lot of creative aspect to it. A lot of thought process that gets in direction. It's an ocean by itself. Script writing, acting, OD consultant. Now OD is such a subject. You know, it we can have many books and many episodes and probably you know huge uh, you know, volumes of books pertaining to that subject. How do you handle this and yet be so simple, crisp, clear, and so humble? How do you manage your life? <clears throat> you know, um, very good question. In the first place, this divide that you talked about between personal life and professional life, uh, to me personally, it's a very mythical kind of life. Okay? okay. Um, there is a core foundation, and that's a core foundation for all of us. And uh, that core foundation, it crosses and it encompasses all identities. Okay. okay? Beginning from the fundamental identities, identities of being a male and female onwards, and then whatever, uh, you know, your religion, your caste, your background, your language, uh, your profession, your qualification, every identity, okay? Now, I have some, you know, kind of, uh, you know, play of words, uh, you know, that I do in my life. So if you really look at identity, it is the I getting dented, therefore it is an identity, which means you're not your full I, okay? And then there is this core I, which is the common I for all of us, the core of our consciousness, core of our soulfulness, or the, uh, the Atmega truth as we call it, okay? So to me, therefore, manifestation of roles is incidental, but the foundation is, you know, so fundamental uh, then comes the question of, uh, you know, uh, how do you make choices and things like that. Uh, the way I make uh, choices is just allow the flow to take place and then see what emerges. One, I'm not too ambitious, so I don't over plan. I don't have numbers in front of me and say, you know, by this, I need to kind of uh, achieve this in terms of some very pressurizing kind of targets in front of me. I never had that in, uh, you know, in my life for the last 35 years, uh, even as a consultant. I would say, you know what, this looks interesting and I'm going to get into this and see how it flows. And then it flows. And as it flows, the tributary start. And I'll say, hey, this tributary looks very interesting. Let me just pursue one. So I become an explorer of life. And the interesting thing is I don't hold back my exploration. Now, there are plus points and there are challenges. The challenges are you're making a choice between going wider versus going deeper, as it looks like. But my learning has been you can simultaneously do both going wider and going deeper as long as what you are coming from is an amazingly core strong foundation. Then I think it becomes very much possible. Oh my God. Now, okay. Now this raises one more question for me because uh, normally, you know, we get to see that our goals or our thought process need to be pretty ambitious. That's how, that's how we've been taught, right? Even if you mm -hmm. have uh, the goals or the dreams have to be ambitious and then strive towards achieving. Now, you said that you've been pretty successful in not having a pretty ambitious goal, but just going by the flow and exploring it. It's, it's, is it something to do with the duality and how do we actually 
take a passion and how do we work towards it or is there a specific science to it is it an art i would ask yeah it's a good question in the sense um, you used a word and i don't know whether you used it consciously or whether it slipped out of your mouth about duality okay no, I, i think the fundamental duality that uh, uh, mankind is stuck with is the duality between the objective reality of life and the subjective reality of life objective reality is very simple anything which is uh, this is an object objective reality which means the material reality porul sandolanam as we call it in tamil and then there is the subjective reality which is the agam sandolanam or what you call as the the other you know in a kind of uh, the reality which is a more fundamental kind of reality the world of objective reality venkat is determined by three factors time quantity and quality okay and all these three are measurable and tangible the human being over the last few centuries have driven himself they have driven themselves so strongly onto this pathway of material objective reality that they are constantly governed by these three principles of time quantity and quality can i do it faster can i have it more can it be better than others okay and the fact that therefore they are measurable they are also subject to feelings of inadequacy and adequacy and what it so happens that for every one therefore there's a lifetime and it is short and within that i have got to get it done so there is an urgency already you know put on to the head the second one somebody else is doing it faster than me so this whole idea of competitive life is also infused and teachers and parents and peers everyone tells you and especially organizations feed you with this idea life is competitive you have the aggressive kind of a quality you got to have the killer instinct nobody tells you that life is collaborative nobody tells you that you must be having the caring instinct i don't understand why so this whole idea of being drawn and influenced by objective reality i think that got dropped off about 30 35 years back and the moment that happened i discovered that life is an immense potential and possibility and then you know the chasing stopped fantastic fantastic and actually you know you're so right because even during my career stint always we've been told or rather even i would have certainly mentioned to my you know uh, team members as well as my colleagues how important is being ambitious and how should we actually be competitive and other things it's an excellent point and collaborativeness and the, these days we are talking about it and thanks for bringing that up sir now there is one uh, you know ted talk of yours still so many talks and so many speeches of that uh, but there is one ted talk in uh, where you had actually specifically mentioned i need to actually check that wording you said beliefs limit our perspective and lead to conformist behavior but i request you to elaborate on this because for us belief is something you know uh, which which is the basic foundation to build the core values be it for the individual and for the organization and which helps us and probably helping us out and reaching that ultimate goal or the purpose of life right could i request you to elaborate on that specific this particular you know sentence you used in one of your ted talks right. and it was right. pretty it's also, yeah it's a, it's all a strong foundation statement that i make uh the you know first i agree to what you are saying saying that yeah sure beliefs any way mold our kind of uh, sense of uh, purpose therefore we kind of bullshit in our life and therefore what we want to pursue and therefore helps us to achieve i'm saying the same belief is also the influencer of our thought process the same belief is the foundation for you know kind of how we want to define the meanings of our life now the interesting thing is um all our beliefs come from our thought processes okay and um if you really dive deeper and ask this question where do the thoughts processes come from um you have some idea from where the thought processes come from mm-hmm. the thought processes always come from the past past this way trend yeah this point for the thought process are the past so j krishnan would he said thought is death because it comes from the past in tamil for example past is called as the iranda kalam right. the dead period so your product of your past is already a dead material that you are carrying so how will you renew yourself so the ability to know the relevance of your belief and the power of dropping your belief this simultaneity makes a person amazingly dynamic 
you know that you need belief system to survive but you need to drop some of your belief systems to evolve i think that simultaneity that ability to know what to take on and what to give up i think that duality is a very important part of life so often times what i quote to people is saying that uh, let's learn from the very intelligent scientific mind of the guy who invented the automobile you know in life generally you say that you know when you bless somebody we bless you as and you say uh, you know come up in life if you you know bless him in hindi you say zindagi mein aage badho if you bless him in tamil you say varkele munnukwa you'll never tell him varkele pinnuk po you'll never tell him go back in life you'll never tell him piche jao right. but that automobile guy he put a reverse gear into his bike you must think as to why did he do that ever it's very clear that in life for you to be evolving and progressing your ability to stop your ability to drop and your ability to go back all these are immense possibilities not just moving forward is a possibility sometimes stopping dropping going back and reviewing all of these are possibilities and therefore i'm saying learn to deal with the beliefs differently excellent excellent actually this was a tremendous explanation because when i was going through that particular video i was like it, it probably you know questioning the uh, you know many frameworks and many uh, definitions but now i understand that it's the truth it's not that you're questioning you're actually making it more strengthening and you're actually giving it that life irandal dan pirakka mudiyum indra and the concept yeah absolutely beautifully it said no punarabhi jananam punarabhi maranam you know it's a bajagavan such a fantastic hymn so it talks about your ability to be coming alive every moment and to be able to pass away the past and die every moment which means can you give up whatever was the, the previous kanam you know punarabhi can you come again alive and for you to come again alive can you give up the past i think that's a question thank you thank you thank you now we know in the current situation the last 2 3 months one pandemic named corona it shook the entire basis of lot of business model lot of mindset and lot of you know uh, i would say the foundation of confidence level of many people right now what what would you suggest how should we actually be looking at be it from the organization perspective as well as from individual perspective how should they look at their future be it in terms of business career their life their future how should they be looking at things and what kind of uh, enhancements do they have to practice to face the current situation be confident and be happy rather be you know glad and be positive and move forward in the life you know it's a, it's, it's a very powerful question and it has got multiple parts uh, so let me lay a foundation to this response and the foundation comes from the previous question that we have addressed i think the current corona situation shows us one of the biggest tragedies coming out of the human belief system of the last few hundred years which is based on this objective reality and this belief that life is a deficit trip and therefore we need to be competitive and be absolutely cutthroat competitive with each other so if you look at the three elements that we talked about in terms of time quantity and quality quality always talks about being better than the other and when this manifests into social phenomena into political phenomena into socio political phenomena and then into ideological phenomena the manifestation of this better than you is the superpower symbol okay. so what you see now post the industrial revolution and then what i call as the insurgency invasion revolution and then the information technology revolution to now the intelligence revolution so in the intelligence revolution being you know kind of this whole idea of becoming a power and a super power being hooked on to that intelligence or whatever it is has taken the world uh, into what i call as an, an, an unimaginable level of intensity of wanting to uh, score over the other you know in in some way or whatever now this is the this is the suffering of the objective reality you just can't escape that because your belief is life is competitive that you have things in shortage you got to have more and more and more nobody pauses and says do i really need this so if there are countries you got to conquer more if you are you know kind of business then you got to you know capture the capture the market more and so on so why i'm talking about that so when this intensity goes into this kind of a level 
in this objective reality the whole world and human beings are objectified which means human beings become utilities they are numbers they are not humans anymore the same challenge can come into organization if you lose the perspective and not really understand that there is very much important for you to hold the simultaneity of objective and subjective reality together you can completely land up convert resources you may call them whatever fancy labels but nothing more than utilities so for example what you see about the migrant labor problem the contract labor problem is exactly one of the beautiful indicators of utilities they were required comfortably at a point of time they were left there unattended the moment that was you know kind of under challenge so it's a kind of plug and play all right so if that is so is there something for us to learn i think first of all living philosophy wise the world has got to learn and i would say therefore embracing of the subjective reality which is the human reality the sensitivity into its whole scientific objective materialistic reality and actually striking what i call balance but an integration of these two is very much required number one at a socio political level and it just you know it, it's crazy we say that we are a very a uh, man is working towards conquering nature and all kinds of statements we make which means we are at terrific states of development and all that and in this history of the last 100 years forget it 50 years forget it last 30 years what is 3 months in 30 years 13 to 12 360 months 3 months out of that is less than 1 person you mean this world cannot take a shock of 1% or less than 1% of its time in a 30 year kind of a span that means something is terribly fragile and wrong with the world if that be so i am saying it's time for us to reexamine the beliefs and i believe that uh, just like the famous 5s system of the japanese i talk about a new 5s system which is required for all of us as leaders as managers as individuals and this is an interesting 5s that i talk about can we have more of this five is the question the first one is greater sensitivity as human being fundamentally and you will have sensitivity in a very simple way when you see yourself in the other person you call it empathy whatever but very simply when i can see myself in you i am more sensitive because i would grant you whatever i am granting to myself so the first one is greater sensitivity the second one is what i call as social accountability forget personal accountability you know this eastern philosophy says aham brahmasmi i am saying aham society recognize that you are society there is no society outside you so whatever little thing whether it is social distancing whether it is taking care of your street whether it is you taking care of the dustbin outside whether it is taking care of whether the opposite side person is following the rules or not and then calling him and drawing his attention social accountability has to become so much more we are partners in guiding managing and facilitating the society so second one is social accountability the third one is share and care more and if required sacrifice more i think this ability to offer and to become an offerer rather than a taker is very much important i think we had enough of uh, getting 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 and forgetting i think we need to have giving 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 and forgiving a lot more okay. i think uh, sharing caring and sacrificing as an element sacrificing comes in when you are willing to give something valued by you or something lesser that you are getting that mindset darala manade that large heartedness need to come in from the deficit mentality most important simplicity sada jeevan uchcha vichar more of less you know there's a beautiful quotation from uh, og mandino the uh, motivational writer he says your poverty is not determined by what you do not have i'm repeating that your poverty is not determined by what you do not have but your richness is determined by what you can live without amazing awesome. statement amazing statement simplicity and finally all this is based on one single factor self awareness as against identity awareness self awareness as against role awareness self awareness as against ego awareness i think this is very very fundamental these five s are very important sensitivity social accountability share care and sacrifice attitude simplicity and self awareness i think these are very important things that we need to add on a lot more to ourselves be as leaders be as individuals be as social systems 
to make life better. Excellent, sir. Uh, no words to describe this. But specifically on the sacrifice thing, sharing, sharing, you know, giving, giving, and forgiving. I think it's a it's a very powerful statement. I think we have to really understand it in spirit and start practicing it. I'll ask you a simple question. When can I ask you a simple question? Sure, sir. Honestly, between you and your wife, and you know, I mean, I'm just taking it as a. Have you actually done a calculation of how much how much will you spend every day at home? For uh, three times of good food, I, I assume that you're a vegetarian, uh, you know, food yes. eater. Okay, have you done a calculation as to how much does it cost in a day to have one day all the food that you require three times and with let's say two coffees and teas? Have you ever done a calculation? Uh, I don't think I have done it. I'm sure she would have done it. We have never discussed it. Uh, probably it's my mistake. All that I would say is probably she would come and ask me, "What do you like to have?" and I would probably tell her that this is what I want. I encourage you. I encourage you do that. You'll be shocked. I will tell you the figure. Yeah. At five hundred rupees, you live a very very luxurious life. This probably I would agree because I was staying in Chennai for two years and I used to cook for myself. So two years. So I, I know I was uh, my expenses monthly expenses was not much yeah, unless you know I. Consider the other luxuries or other things that I want to ask. So, yeah. so the point I'm saying, when it's therefore when we talk about simplicity, all that I'm saying is this clarity that how much I drive my life based on need based and then want based and then what I call as this comfort based. If that clarity exists and you are first of all addressing the need part of it and putting it into place, when can you play such a beautiful game of life? Most of the time. The human mind has become so idiotic. Hey, I got twenty shirts, man. Why do you require twenty shirts? Yeah. Hey, fabulous discount in Amazon. Do you buy because Amazon give discount or because you need to wear something? Now you know we are gone off the rocker. All that I'm saying is simplicity and sharing need to become virtues that we integrate with ourselves a lot more. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, sir. It's it's tremendous. Uh, no, actually, you know these five verses that you have mentioned. It, for just me to ask you a specific another question meaning we have so many leadership models we have so many leadership frameworks we talk about transformational leadership situational leadership and we have you know five levels of different leadership there are many models but all of these models could not help or address the current pandemic or the business models and the way people or the leaders have actually approached the entire uh, framework. Right. Do you think it's the time that we need to relook into our models and come up with a new model, or these five verses or any specific dimensions would help in facing such things in the future and be ready? Now, one is risk taking. So we have to stop, think, review it. Now, is this that time where we need to probably relook at? Entire leadership and what things should we consider in building a purposeful leadership? I love this question for purposeful leadership. First, I let me compliment you because right in the beginning, as this conversation started, you know there was a point where you uh, use the words success and then you became cautious and said may not be success the right word. I, I love that caution number one. So that's one about uh, you know kind of uh, what does a leader really do? A leadership can be success oriented, a leadership can be growth oriented, and a leadership can be evolution oriented. Then we need to know the difference between these three. Leadership focused on success is transactional and at best about transactional. So I make effort and I need to have a result. And if the effort fulfills, uh, you know, the kind of expectation I have, I'm successful. Excellent. So that's transactional and you know, kind of situational. Uh, growth again can be unidimensional. Growth can be therefore in the objective world. I'm achieving numbers in the evaluative criteria. I'm doing very well compared to the previous years. I'm doing better now. Therefore, I'm growing. I think the third dimension is very important, which is evolutionary. Now, evolutionary is when I'm not only going better in terms of numbers. I'm also shifting orbits and going to a different level of looking at. I think this orbit shift is very important, and the orbit shift makes you, let's say, from a team player, 
into a functional player, from a functional player into an organizational player, from an organizational player into a sectoral player, from a sectoral player to an industry player, from an industry player into a social system player, from a social system player into a global outlook player. That is evolution. And not just the leader, he needs to bring this perspective to his followers too. Look at Aziz Premji, he's an evolutionary leader. Look at Ratan Tata or JRD for that matter, evolutionary leaders. I mean, to them, yes, industries, businesses, their successes were there. But then say, what difference does this bring to the society? I think awesome kind of uh, evolutionary leadership. And then I think uh, this evolutionary concept needs to be understood and therefore encouraging both your own mind and the mind of your you know, kind of followers. I think that is the biggest job of the leaders. Therefore, leader, the first and foremost definition of leader that I would talk about is the one who shows the way. In Tamil, the best meaning for the word leader is Vadigati, the one who shows the pathway. All right, so this evolutionary pathway, sure, I think to, to me, that is the leader. So how does he do that? Now comes the important question, you know, in terms of various models and all that. Yeah, you're right. There are very many intellectual models. But there is one model, not even model, a concept that I believe in. And I think, uh, you know, you asked a question about belief earlier. It's not belief, it's so much such a foundational reality of existence. And that I use in this word called, you know, very consciously a trance. And I, I'm saying form. If you want to really understand transformational leadership, the ability to go beyond the form is the most important thing. Unless, you know, transatlantic, going beyond the Atlantic, transport, going beyond one port, transform, going beyond the current form. So it says, can you go beyond the objective reality? All right. So this transformation leadership model, and at some point of time, I would like to dive deeper on that with you. It's based on four anchors. And the four anchors are, number one, proactivity. Number two, sensitivity. Number three, principle centeredness. And number four, surplus mentality. Ah, okay. Okay. And this model therefore works based on these four foundations. And as a result of that, high on proactivity and high on sensitivity creates a transformational leader and the institution builder. High on surplus mentality, high on principle centeredness creates the investor and the creator of possibilities. All right. So it's a very interesting kind of model. I think we need to have transformational leadership model of a very significant dynamic nature where it is really multidimensional. It cannot be unilaterally evaluation oriented, objective oriented kind of, uh, then, it, then it becomes unidimensional. Right. It becomes multi. What is the difference between evaluation and something else? Very simple. You can either be evaluating or you could be engaging, period. That's it. Fantastic. Engagement calls for dropping evaluation. You engage because you believe something is very important. Engagement is that you commit to the welfare relationship. Typically, when we get engagement before a marriage, it means what we are talking about is now you are committed to each other without a barrier. When you engage a gear in a car or a vehicle, which means you are putting into a slot where it is getting now hooked onto, it cannot be separated. Engagement is the willingness to completely integrate with the other. And therefore, I'm saying the human engagement needs to match the human evaluation trip that we have related to the objective reality. And then I'm saying these leaders, evolutionary leaders, so transformational leaders with that evolutionary perspective are the leaders required for us at all the levels. You will find them at shop floor supervisory level, I can tell you, Venkat, and you will miss them at managing director's level. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. It, it's actually, you know, it, it looks so simple, but it has so much of depth in it and so much of meaning in it. I think this transform, the definition that you explained itself will be a volume by itself. Yeah. It's like talking about it. Great. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. And uh, what would be your suggestion? Now, we are looking at, uh, you know, this is a time where we have the millennials coming up in the corporate ladder and they are getting into the entrepreneurship, they're getting into the leadership positions. And eventually we would actually be noticing the percentage would gradually increase and they're going to dominate it. So mm -hmm. for them, they mm -hmm. are so habituated in the digital and the technology world. So mm -hmm. what would your suggestion and advice be for them 
to enhance their competencies and build into a transformational uh, you know leadership role considering these five c's as well as the four s that you have currently spoken you know this is interesting you know when you define them they become so much they are so much digital people which is wonderful but understand the concept of digital what does it mean okay and um, it's it's very beautiful to know that uh, when it's digital it's essentially number one uh, easy to manage and it is predominantly visual okay visual and of course audible and uh, computer intelligence systems and all that it also means that you are constantly preoccupied with what you see okay and you're constantly engaging therefore be it your mobile and therefore the whatsapp in that whether it's a facebook in that whether it's a whatever kind of thing you are caught up with that now the point is that um, therefore your 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 tendency to be looking outside has multiplied hundreds of times compared to the past decades and your opportunity to look inside has significantly decreased so i would say become less digital in the first place or match your digital pursuit which very diligently looking inside kind of pursuit that's very really important first and foremost all right second one i'm saying add collaboration attitude to the competitive attitude i'm not saying take away competitive attitude become more competent from a competitive the word competition comes from competency right so earlier all your games were amateur games why because competency to show how competent you were became competitions all right now here competition becomes can i destroy somebody so that i can live kind of thing right? we don't have to be there at all meet your competence all right and having built your competence there are some awesome things that you can do and the first thing that you need to ask is what i'm going to do with this competency hmm. and i they will go back to that fundamental question you are very clear about your aim and ambition but what's your offering to the world right right uh, i think i'll never forget that okay so i think that's an interesting thing so you want to become somebody you want to get that job you want to get that salary you want to get that position fantastic can you start saying what are you going to be offering so start examining what you can offer and this is where something interesting comes and you can start becoming an offerer by becoming a practicing offerer and i would even strongly recommend to people at whatever age they are identify three things that you can do to somebody out there in your next door in your society in your street in your organization and just for the sake of adding value go and tell them can you do this for me become an offering person this is very important the second important thing is a beautiful quote from bharatiya which i would encourage every youngster to know it does not matter what you choose to do all that matters is how deeply convincingly and devotedly you will do that is it okay if i quote something in tamil is that all right yeah please sir. yeah i i'll probably okay. add uh, english translation yeah i will add english translation so bharatiya says vayagam kaapavarenum you could be the savior of the world allade siru vaalpala kadai vaithirupavarenum or you could be a small vendor of bananas and a small basket going on the street and shouting your throat out vayagam kaapavarenum siru vaalpala kadai vaithirupavarenum you could be either of this it doesn't matter oliyagala thoril seide you should be a person of highest integrity no falsehood ever in what you do and what you offer oliyagala thoril seide pirul potra vaalvor and when you are such an integrated person integrity oriented person the whole world looks at you smiles and says oliyagala thoril seide pirul potra vaalvor enganamu meru the world says this man is the greatest man so drop this idea of what is it that i should do which will be recognized anything that you do will be recognized provided you do it with and there is something that i talk about you do that number one with dedication with devotion with absolute discipline and determination these four d's i call about if you are sweeping if i am the housekeeper of your house and if i am sweeping two small rooms as long as i believe that look the way i sweep your floors nobody else in the world can do that and that is my pride and joy 
believe me, I'm somewhere. So I'm saying to the youngsters, drop your idea as to whether you are doing whatever is in the trend or whatever is in the fashion or whatever is in the asking. Do what you enjoy doing, do what you're very good at doing and go and make an offering of what you're doing to somebody who needs that go and say, you know, can I do this for you? And sheer offering and practice will make you into a craftsman, into an expert. Start offering for the sake of offering. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what we'll do is uh, I would actually check with Ajiba as my uh, colleague. I'll actually ask her to log in. Uh, okay. We might have a couple of questions through the YouTube. I'll ask her to probably take two questions for you. Sure. Meanwhile, yeah. before she actually joins, uh, I want to talk about, uh, specifically ask you about this book. Rajini Panch Tantra. I remember we spoke about it in, uh, in our previous call. And uh, I read through the book. That is, till the time I got the book and I read through it, I never could, you know, imagine the punch dialogues can actually be, you know, explained in so life. beautifully for both as an in, for an individual as well as for an organization. Right. Now, how did you get that thought process? How did you get that thought process? Because yeah, so, that yeah, so, again gives a very, you know, out of the box, I'll, I'll probably use a jargon. The out of the box or your multi-dimensional thought process is that. Okay. So first I'll give the credit to that initiative to PC Bala because he was the originator of the idea. Bala is a huge uh, devotee of uh, Rajni Khan, not just fan. Okay. I would say I'm not that kind of a you know devotee or a fan of Rajni Khan. I'm a, I worked with him in five films. He's a terrific human being. I just love you know that personality and that individual human being, we have a great relationship, we are in constant touch, and we have tremendous respect for each other, and I have humongous, you know, kind of uh, admiration for him. But Bala is a hardcore Rajini fan, which means not one film of Rajini he would have missed in his life. Wow. And I would have in my life not seen more than five films of Rajini, so that's different. But uh, Bala being what he was, therefore he was collecting the punch dialogues. Mm -hmm. And then he was kind of making small scribblings and notes out of those punch dialogues. And uh, as a consultant and as a, you know, as an, I had an interaction with Bala and then that became friendship. And during the course of our friendship, Bala talked about this particular idea that he has and which he said, you know, sometimes I think the Talibar's uh, dialogues are, you know, good management kind of uh, statements. And I'm, I'm, sometimes he used to share that through email with some of the friends. Then it stuck in his mind saying that can we compile this together? So he was compiling and then he one day called me up and said, uh, hey, you know, Raja, uh, what do you think? We can put all this together and uh, if you can add your you know, perspective of values in life, we can take it to a different level. When that, uh, when that thought came, we discussed and then it struck my mind that why not go to a full-fledged effort of making that into a book? Because we could uh, partner and Bala could look at it from the business perspective angles. And I could look at it from life values angle. And you know, then the combination of Tamil and English can also come in. So we started. And uh, I think the core work of that book, we finished in about a month's time. And then we took it to uh, uh, Rajni sir and said, uh, here is something that we would like you to see and approve. He was taken aback. He said, wow, I thought, you know, we made those dialogues. We knew that they were critical or, you know, punch dialogues. But what you people have done is awesome, absolutely. So that was the whole idea. And uh, honestly, uh, there is that part of uh, uh, Rajini sir, which is a significant part, which is very deeply, very deeply, if I can use the term spiritual, very deeply human. And therefore, uh, you know, even in his personal life, uh, he operates, he lives, and he kind of influences from very strong values. So for us, therefore, to make it into this kind of a book was an easier job. I think the original dialogue writers of the film, I think they did a terrific job. Ah, okay. Fantastic. Uh, just one moment, sir. I think I've got the question, so let me go through it. A technical, whatever, snag or something, Ajiba is not able to join. Yeah. Uh, Raghunath Kashyap, uh, he mentions, Raja, sir, very excellent analogy on identity, ident, and a fantastic explanation and belief system of letting go the past to evolve. What is the first thing I can do now to let go of my past? So let go. 
<laughs> you know that's a you know first of all kashyap what's his first name ragunath kashyap ragu lovely you know beautiful question i i love the basis of your question what what happens you know for us is uh, we don't let go because we think that uh, my future my current comfort and future comfort is dependent on what i'm holding on to i'm not saying throw away your past or throw away your beliefs because they have added value to you respect them keep them can you add on something more i think that's an important question but by any chance if your beliefs are limiting you then ask this very important question do i need to hold you like this or can i give you a gift of separation ask very respectfully because some of these things we have cherished in our life so when you recognize that there are inhibiting factors respectfully ask them can i give you a gift of separation because even that separation needs to be done with a lot of grace okay because sometimes it could be relationships sometimes it could be conversations sometimes it could be kind of uh, promises that you made whatever okay so there is needs to be a lot of dignity in that and reexamine these four questions what four questions what will others think of me will it affect my future will i hurt others feelings will i definitely succeed stop asking these questions okay 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 i'm not saying become ruthless but i'm saying many times these are dysfunctional questions good chances are nobody is thinking about you but you are imagining that others are thinking about you you have a great capacity to convert the word future into anxiety drop that when somebody says that i'm very hurt what he is saying is i'm experiencing pain a lot of times you don't need to pick up the guilt they experience pain because they have to now come out of their confinement boundaries and that is painful so re examine that guilt feeling that you pick up you say that i recognize your pain but i don't need to own up the guilt there's a difference between these two and finally will i definitely succeed don't ask for guarantee cards in life you are not a iphone or a godrej refrigerator to come with a guarantee card or a warranty card when you are born we are humans evolutionary we don't need a guarantee card we have to just try endeavor and learn that losses always appear in any balance sheet of any company in the world on the asset side not on the liability side beautiful fantastic fantastic thank you sir thanks a lot and yeah you know i would request you to give uh, i would like to actually have so once again i would request you to subscribe to our channel and uh, share this video with your friends if you find it uh, valuable thank you so much.